Meyer. Welcome to the pod presented by Prime Video. It's Tuesday night, and uh, the ACC is currently still alive. By the time you get this, who knows? Who knows? Uh, no, I think it will uh, survive a little bit. And Pat, what were we what were we just watch? We watched Wagner. We're watching we the watched first four, kinda. The first game of the first. Oh uh, yes, the first night. Wagner just uh, held on and beat Howard. Dan, I want you to know the first points of the NCAA tournament were scored by a 26 year old eighth year senior. How's that for a sign of the times? <laughs> <laughs> eighth year. Yes, Seth Towns for Howard, who had three medical red shirts. Oof. Two at Ohio State, one at Harvard. On his third team, uh, voluntarily left the Ohio State program, went to Howard now, and he scored the first points of the of the turn. Did he graduate from Harvard? I think so. I, so I, I thought I heard something about him actually pursuing a PhD. I don't know whether that was a joke or for real. Might be real. If you get to Harvard, don't transfer. <laughs> Wait, red shirt. I, Eight. All right. Well, look, he really wants to play college hoops. Uh, Wagner almost blew it. A, a mid major or a low, a low major, particularly trying to close out a game is like watching mm. someone try to park a cruise ship. <laughs> someone drunk try to park a cruise ship. Yeah. Uh, or like it's... when a baby deer gets stuck out on the ice on a lake and it's just, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's just a nightmare. Yeah, you're 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 teaching your teenager how to how to parallel park or, or how to drive a stick. Yeah, yeah, that those that's pretty much what it, what it's going with. Um, but, also, all right, uh, what else you got there, Pat? You got something else? Well, I just uh, second straight year the NEC has won in the play-in game, and guess what happened last year after they won in the play-in game? That was fairly Dickinson. They then beat uh, Purdue. Ooh, so look out, see. North Carolina! Look out, Wagner's coming for you. Don't in lock the, it. You never know. And I know in the NCAA tournament Wagner power ratings. We now we have Milt Wagner, Mo Wagner, Franz Wagner, the Wagner Seahawks, <laughs> and we'll see whether DJ Wagner can join the group from Kentucky. Right now, mm. Wagner Seahawks are ahead of him. <laughs> Forty man, he's got <laughs> broken down. I'm man. on it, man. <laughs> so I mean, let's go. This is a forty time. This is it. This oh, is the. The uh, we're in the forty era here. This Dad, is Prime, video, it's Prime Video is is sponsoring March Madness. We're on it. They're not. Prime go. Video is not sponsoring your dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I'd love to talk about the tournament, but the people who are involved in all manners of college athletics generally just suck, and they refuse to let people enjoy the positives of the sport like hey it's march madness let's let everybody talk about march madness no hey why don't we put the transfer portal the uh, at midnight of selection sunday so we can have all negative headlines and I, I, I talked to a couple coaches in the tournament this week they're dying they got to recruit while preparing for this event like why is this going on We'll get. To, we can talk about that later, but it's like I got to recruit. I should be. You should be enjoying this week. You're in the tournament. Enjoy it. No, I got to. I'm making nil deals on transfer portals. But even worse, Clemson just comes along and decides to sue the ACC today. This couldn't Unbelievable. wait. Unbelievable. <laughs> kind of rude, Clemson. Kind of rude. <laughs> They're in the dance too. I know. Tells you what they care about at Clemson. <laughs> What? Why couldn't this wait until like a couple weeks? Uh, let's just try to blow up the ACC. Everyone's having a good time with college basketball right now. Let's destroy the league. I have read Clemson's uh, uh, lawsuit um, mainly because most of it was redacted. That made it easier. <laughs> yeah. It's like, <laughs> where was that when I was still having to do reading for school? <laughs> It's a 28 page document. Well, if half of it's redacted, you get through it pretty quick. Um, we will see. You never know how it's going to play out in court. Maybe there's some switcheroo legal strategy here, but this thing seemed didn't seem too impressive to me. It's basically saying a grant of rights does not grant the rights. 
Clemson is saying, yes, we signed something that granted our rights to the ACC to 2036. However, it only counts if we're in the ACC. But that's not how grants of rights have ever worked. So perhaps they can get a new definition of grant of rights. But I know no one who has ever been involved in the grant of rights situation who thought that's what it meant. So that's how I read it. Ross, you were spending a considerable amount of time on this. Uh, Explain what happened and explain where I'm wrong. I don't have enough bourbon in the house right now uh, of the six, six and a half hours. If you want to run out, this. if you want to run yeah. out, that's Pat, yeah. Pat's going to go tell jokes for a while. Dad yeah. jokes. I, you should go then. Bring one. me one. Um, Yeah. So I think you, you summed most of it up there as, fact, as part, at least what their argument is in the, in the, uh, the documents, which is if we're not part of the ACC, then the ACC should not own our broadcasting rights. And what they do, they use, to get a little more detail, they use the ESPN contract in its relationship with the grant of rights. Uh, The two kind of are linked and connected together. And so it uses that, and it uses the wording of that, uh, of the exact wording of the grant of rights, which is... um, Schools granted the media rights to the league to, quote, perform the contractual obligation of the conference expressly set for in the ESPN agreement, end quote. So it it's basically saying if Clemson leaves the ACC, then its games are no longer subject to the ESPN agreement, which means its games are no longer o- owned by the ACC. Um, now, uh, plenty of people are going to maybe roll their eyes at that one, right? Uh, but that's what they're using. Uh, that's the main gist of the argument. Uh, they are arguing a second point that they don't owe the exit fee, which is separate from the grant of rights. The exit fee is a percentage of the average um, of revenue, conference revenue, and it's $140 million right now. And so they're arguing that, that they never agreed That numbers escalated so much that they never agreed uh, or expected that. Um, So those are kind of the two points they're arguing. You know, we have right. This is a separate argument than than Florida State. Clemson, well, they have done it probably a little a little more quietly. Although this was been expected for a while, I think that they would take some action. I didn't necessarily expect it during the NCAA tournament, but here we are. But Florida State's argument is a little, a little louder and more pronounced, um, and and is just kind of flat out: we we don't owe anything, right? Um, because of all these reasons, uh, and Clemson kind of narrows in on this specific wording and how it ties to the ESPN agreement. What's going to happen? I have no idea. Right. Um, I don't know what a judge can do to me. There are three options for both Florida State and Clemson here as far as how this ends. You know, number one would be a judge that sides with them, a court that sides with them and lets them out for free or or for a limited uh, minimal uh, figure. Uh, Number two, the ACC negotiates, you know, settles with them in some way in a negotiation or number three, they just pay whatever it is and leave but to me there's not a number four they're clemson and florida state the ship has sailed right when you come out like this i don't expect clemson or florida state to be in the acc in two to three two years within two years i mean i don't think this is something that just like gets repaired yeah two years uh, the uh He talked about specific wording. Here are a few specific words. Quote, the ACC is a great conference, and this increases the national exposure, brings in additional revenue, and offers greater opportunity for student athletes. Clemson President Jim Clements said in (laughs) in 2019, for us and the Florida States and others, it stabilizes the conference long term. Hmm. Until... 
everything gets destabilized, then we got to go. We got to go. And, you know, this is part and parcel of the ongoing problem within college athletics is everybody just keeps chipping away at the hole for the benefit of themselves. And, yeah, it's human nature. And you can go down the line. I mean, Texas, hey, we're just looking out for ourselves. Don't blame us. Oklahoma, well, don't blame us. We're just following Texas. SEC, don't blame us. We, who wouldn't take Texas and Oklahoma? ESPN, well, we weren't involved, but hey, yeah, sure, this is great. Don't blame us. Fox, don't blame us that they did that. We got to react. We got to send USC and UCLA to the Big Ten. USC, well, don't blame us. We got to go. UCLA, don't blame us. We just got to do what USC does. Big Ten, don't blame us. Who doesn't want the Los Angeles market? Colorado, don't blame us for going to the Big 12. Everything's destabilized. Oregon and Washington, don't blame us. Why would you stay in this conference? Fox, don't blame us. We're going to go get the other good parts there and further buttress the Big Ten. Utah, Arizona, Arizona State, Big 12, don't blame us. Stanford, California, ACC, don't blame us. Florida State, Clemson, what else are we going to do? Look at everything. Don't blame us. Nobody's to blame. Everybody's to blame. You forgot SMU, so can we blame them? <laughs> ah, sure, sure. <laughs> Throw it all on them. That was the good Mustangs. stuff, Pat. Pat is on fire tonight. Fired up. A lot going on today. It's his month. It's March, Dan. It is March. <laughs> it's the 40, 40 yard. This March. is this is March right here. Uh, conference realignment, litigation, lawsuits. Here we are. Modern day college uh, football. This college is just, athletics. Uh, I mean, it's just depressing. Um, I, I it is like Pat just rattled off. I don't, I can't blame Clemson or Florida State for acting this way, and, and to a degree, because everybody else is acting this way. So you know, what do you expect them to be the the magnanimous, the magnanimous, you know, wronged party? Just says, ah, oh, it's all right, guys. We'll just go along to get along. Um. It's just sick what the leaderships of this sport or the lack of leadership in this sport has done to the whole enterprise. I mean, this is the ACC. We no longer have a Pac-12. And now we have an ACC here in March of all months when they really do well. And we're, you know, you've got two years, Ross says. I don't know. I don't know. Nothing is out of sense. I, I still got to see how they get out of this, but they want out. And and like, where is this ending up? Where do they go? <laughs> what, yeah. what happens well, to the rest of, of them? Here. I mean, there's a whole bunch yeah. of things, but it's just, yeah. we just, there's nobody to trust. There's no one to believe in. There's nobody looking out for anybody. The, the, there's so many dumbass decisions that lead to this. People who don't see the threat and then don't protect themselves and then do this. Uh, and, and and here we are. I don't know. We're we going to have an ACC. I mean, what what are we doing? Yeah, well, it's not going to look like it does now. Right. We, we're I'm sure we'll have an ACC potentially, but it, it certainly won't look like it does now. I I think that uh, I, I try to answer four questions in kind of an analysis uh, in the story on Yahoo. It's well done, um, by the way. It, and well one is thank you. One is like, why now? Right, we're we're in the middle of the NCAA tournament. The, I don't think it was a coincidence this dropping the day that the CFP and ESPN announced its deal was done. Um, right, and we we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we wrote the this the original story about the revenue distribu uh, distribution breakdown of the CFP and how it puts the a ACC in maybe the uh, most difficult position. And uh, we wrote in there about, hey, you know, Clemson is lawyers are gearing up and this would be the thing to, sh to send them over the edge. Lo and behold, that's kind of exactly what's happened. It's, it was the same that happened with Florida State in December, right? An event triggered their filing. The Seminoles being left out of the CFP triggered an earlier than expected filing. And I think this was the same case. So that kind of answers the why now because this huge revenue gap that got bigger with the CFP finalizing its revenue distribution. But the big question, Dan just asked it, 
is where do Florida State and Clemson land? Where, where do they where do they end up? Um, and I try to break down maybe the three options. And, and I think option one is you have a complete implosion of the ACC, not dissimilar to what happened in the Pac-12. And, and you have teams kind of scattered about uh, looking for homes in complete disarray, potentially could be gotten at the cheap, like Washington and Oregon, Stanford, Cal, and SMU were. So you have you have that situation that everybody could be scattered in either various other other of the other three leagues or others take schools, or you have a smaller ACC and maybe more valuable ACC reform. Thus, of course, you know leaving out the less valuable programs, right? In order for you to, ha- to have an ACC implosion, I think one of three things has to happen. ESPN has to end the deal, right? And there's two ways that can happen. The ACC falls short of the 15-member requirement. Um, if they fall under 15 members, ESPN can end the contract. If, and then the second way that ESPN could end the contract is if they don't opt into the next nine years, which happens next February and the contract ends in 2027. The other way it could end and then this implosion could happen is FSU and Clemson, but the courts grant FSU and Clemson a free exit, right? Because that would just null and void the grant of rights and everybody would would be uh, open to leave, you know? So that's one way. Uh, and I think the second thing that could happen here is you you have some kind of full college athletics landscape shakeup through athlete compensation or a new division or whatever you want to call it. And that kind of shakes up the conferences. And the last way, of course, is the easy one. And that's the SEC and Big Ten, just picking up FSU, Clemson, and whoever now, whoever else, which leads me, of course, to the next question is, who's next to follow them? Well, yes, and that's an immense question. And that's where you go to the core of of stripping down the guts of the ACC because North Carolina is the the jewel everybody wants, right? That's the one both the SEC and the Big Ten would fight over. It's unclear, uh, and I think you laid it out in the story, and it certainly jives with everything I've heard, that the SEC is not clamoring for Florida State and Clemson. It doesn't help them in terms of TV markets. It aggravates existing members. Uh, now, if it's going to come down to us or the Big Ten, maybe that changes. But uh, there's nobody in the SEC that's saying, "Man, we we're going all out to get them." Does the Big Ten want them? I don't know. And you know, where, do they'll figure out some other deal, maybe. But if it does come down to the Big Ten and SEC picking over the bones of the ACC, then North Carolina is absolutely on the block and Virginia would seemingly be on the block as well. So that's where it gets even more morbidly fascinating. That is what we've been hearing for a long time. Not a lot of interest in Florida state and Clemson, but you know, these things can also change. Uh, We get scared. Someone else is going to get them. I I don't know. Yeah. Defensive maneuvers. That's possible. Mm -hmm. Could bring back the old big East football. Good. Bring that back. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, what happens still- to the basketball schools, Dan? You know what happens to the Dukes and the Syracuses? Well, and maybe the Louisville's right football teams. Big, yeah, I mean, Big East is certainly would I would guess would be a path potentially in some way. Yeah, I would. I would bet those schools would look at the Big Twelve. But you know, Ross, and you put it in the story. I mean. Yeah, Louisville and Duke. I mean, think of what we're talking about here. We're talking about taking Duke and North Carolina, who are eight miles apart, who are Tobacco Road, who are the ACC, and just splitting them off, and one goes over here and the other goes over there? Really? It's crazy. This is completely insane, but it's also entirely possible. And and Mm -hmm. for no good reason. No good reason. I, I, I don't. You guys wasted all. Stop paying your def- uh, your defensive coordinator two million bucks, and then you got to buy him out. Yeah. Stop building ridiculous facilities. Like there's, it, you don't need to spend this much money. 
They have more money than ever, and they're all broke, supposedly. Yeah. They're all running around. Guy's been gambling too much. Yeah. No, that's what they're they're all talking about. I mean, this is all a revenue grab, and there's more and more coming in with the new playoff deal. We just one point three billion coming let's just in. Destroy the whole. Let's burn the whole house down. Yeah. But yeah, yeah it's totally nil fault. <laughs> yeah, think about the new CFP deal, which you know finally got finalized uh, on Tuesday. Um, it's our long national nightmare is officially over. Uh, but the ACC, while the gap is large between the SEC when it comes to the distribution in the Big Ten, you know, anywhere from seven to ten million per school per year, they'll be behind SEC and Big Ten. Their amount that they will get, the ACC, it's around fifteen million dollars a year per school, is still two and a half times what they're getting now. Think about that. Yeah, not enough though. I, I really wonder, I don't think they can get this thing organized well enough, but I really wonder like at what point if if you're Clemson and and I'm really not advocating for this, but if you're Clemson and you're like, we're falling behind, we can't compete in football, which I think they can anyway, by the way, but they don't want to. But like at what point does the state legislature I brought this up? Like say, look, let's kick these guys 30 million a year out of the general budget to keep Clemson football viable because of the economic impact that having Clemson football being important brings to that area of the state. They I mean, give a billion dollars to an NFL, uh, to an NFL owner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, like the idea of that is somewhat reprehensible, but at the same time, so isn't this. I, yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like what's, you know? what's more reprehensible to North to, to like life in North Carolina has included Duke and Carolina and NC State and Wake playing basketball, right? It's part of the fabric and the part of, you know, the the it's it's what makes life in in that state. And so it's like, what happens if these things go away? And certainly the economic impact of certain programs, you know, in terms of the the influx of people coming into the hotels and the restaurants and all that. I don't know. None of this makes sense. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. So. In the short term, I, I I agree with Ross. I don't think this is a particularly good lawsuit. I don't even really think it. I don't. Maybe in this, uh, they found some guy down there. It's a Pickens County they went to or something. I don't know. Uh, yep. Maybe someone in Pickens County is going to buy this argument. I, it looked pretty weak to me, but um, it doesn't matter. It's the sentiment, not not the uh, what they're actually saying. Um, because it, again. Everyone knows how grant of rights works, and they're saying, no, it works some other way. Um, I, I don't know how you win that. I don't know how you win that, but that's where we're at. Second problem in the calendar, again, do we really need to have conference realignment in the middle of the NCAA basketball tournament? Do we have to have this transfer portal in the middle of the – who came up with this, Pat? <laughs> I don't know. Blaine Pat. I I. I don't know. Other than people who don't think, you know, they never consider the the consequences, the timing, the the unintended consequences. It's all geared, and you know, I get it, and I understand. The same with the football. Like, as soon as we reach, you know, a, a period where all of the league schedules are done, then the players need to have that time to make quick decisions. I say, you know what, you're going to have to wait a little while. Because it's March, for one thing. It's not in football, it is the end of the semester, right? right. It's December, and you're right there and you can change for the next semester. You're not changing, you're not doing maybe for some schools on a quarter system. To those schools, I say, I'm sorry. You're gonna have to wait for your player. I, you know, I this could be April no 15th, right? This could be yes. tax day. Yes. This I, I coaches are like go they're pulling their hair out. I don't blame them. I'm like, well, this is, ah, uh, this is all, well, it's you, who can, this is not NIL. You guys came up with a calendar that's stupid. You would not have free agency in the NFL in the first week of the playoff. That would be a disadvantage to the teams that are in the playoff. So you know what they do? They go, hey, how about we have it on March 1st? Hey, okay. Uh, I, I don't. I, I just don't understand. I don't understand any of it. This is what we got. I, I like, 
again, they, they, you get all these uh, alleged smart people together and they come up with things that just tie themselves into knots. And, you know, certainly the calendar was run by the basketball oversight committee and, and the football oversight committee, which has coaches on them and ADs on them. These are people who should be able to think through the calendar and say, okay, is this going to be a problem? And they <laughs> yeah. apparently it never occurred to them that this is a problem. I mean, if you're an NCAA tournament team and you are anybody, but let alone a mid-major or a low-major, your guys are going to get po – you have to re-recruit. Yeah. Like maybe Duke can sit there and be like, these three are going pro. We got these three guys coming in. Maybe we're going to try to find some shooter or something. You know, we're going to try to find one guy. Like if you're, you know, if you're uh, whatever, a 14 seed in this event, your entire starting five is gone <laughs> or could be. It means you need a new starting five. I mean, several teams, and it's pretty funny, you know, like they – they kneecap the the mid majors and low majors in the NIT by no longer guaranteeing the regular season champions a spot mm. if they don't make the NCAA's, so they could have more bids for the high majors. Well, a bunch of them turned it down. Why? Because the portal just opened. <laughs> St. John's, Ole Miss, Oklahoma. It's like, wait a minute, we got to secure our roster. We don't care about the crap ass NIT. <laughs> so that worked well. <sighs> when would be best for it? April. After the final four. Yeah. April 15th yeah. sounds like a great time. There's plenty day. of time to then trans. You're, again, you have to do it in December for football because you got to get them ready for January 3rd when some classes start. You got to enroll. There are students. Totally get it. Nobody's enrolling in school on March. What is this? The 8th, 19th. Right. You can enroll in the fall. You can enroll in the summer. There's plenty of time. Plenty of time. This is, I don't know. I got absolutely no idea. I can't find anyone who can explain it to me. If you know, you want to call me and explain me why I got it all wrong. There's a reasonable explanation. Good luck. Good luck to you yeah. and uh, Wagner. If we're overlooking it, let us know, please. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't get it. Speaking of transfer portal, Caden Proctor. Mm. Mammoth, Alabama freshman lineman who left, transferred to Iowa. Not so fast, my friend. He's back. Bama rush. <laughs> <laughs> he transferred to Iowa for half a semester. <laughs> what was your favorite part of the Caden Proctor era at Iowa? <laughs> Give him a gold watch for his services. Yeah. yeah he was great in winter conditioning. He was awesome. Great guy. <laughs> Character guy. Team guy. <laughs> I mean, this is tough for Iowa. First off, you think you got him out of high school and you don't goes to Alabama. Then you get him back. You're all excited. Uh, you got to Now you got to live this down. Like this kid was like, yeah, yeah, I'll leave Alabama. I would be great. And got up there. was like, hell no. <laughs> That's well, the and, and <laughs> Alabama people are like, wait, Iowa tampered with him. Now oh, yeah. like, did Alabama tamper right back? <laughs> so can Iowa say anything about it? <laughs> Caden hardly knew you. <laughs> how the hell do you transfer back? There's like a month left of school. How, would he, how do you get in? Is he leaving classes? I don't understand. I who knows. <laughs> Show for the last two classes or something. There's a lot of academic miracles that happen these days. Good luck. Well, hey, yeah. good victory there for Alabama, though. He's a good player. Yeah, I mean, and, and think about kind of the the outflow that they've had via both players, and, you know, obviously in Saban and recruits and so this is an awfully big one to get back that's for sure yeah all right we'll be back right after this talk some ncaa basketball tournament all right pat what's the latest in march here i know uh kansas is dealing with injuries uh which is unfortunate what's happening yeah um so yeah kansas who started the season preseason number one did not live up to it. Has not had a very good season, certainly by Kansas standards. Um, they still, they got a number four seed, but they really hit the skids at the end of the year. They had injuries to both Kevin McCuller, outstanding two-way player. He can score, and he's a really good defender. And Hunter Dickinson, seven-foot-two center, transfer from Michigan. Uh, they held them both out of the Big 12 tournament, and the thinking was, well, 
they're just taking precautions there because Kansas is a six seed, which they never are. So they're basically punting that to get ready for the big dance. Well, comes out today. Bill Self says that McCuller will not play in the NCAA tournament. He's shut down, and that is a major loss for them. They don't have a bunch of great scorers. It does cost them their best wing slash perimeter defender. He's a good rebounder. Uh, so that's a big hit for Kansas. And, you know, I, like they were a four seed that maybe could have been lower. And now you look at that. First of all, you know, did they conveniently time this announcement till after the bracket came out when it could have hurt their seeding? But it definitely hurts their competitiveness on the floor. And look out, they play Samford. Uh, Bucky McMillan, the former high school coach and poker player who presses the hell out of teams. I say that's upset alert for, for Kansas. Yeah, that's going to be big. That's a, that's big news. And, uh, unfortunate for, uh, for KU, uh, tough when you get injuries this time of year. Um, all right. I wanted to play this little game of, um, just some coaches that really need good NCA, uh, tournaments. They all want to win. They all help. Certainly, some of them need to win, but need, some need to win. Honestly, have to win. Don't have to necessarily mean you have to win a national title. It'll certainly help, but a deep run, right? Mm -hmm. Some coaches are are wouldn't maybe they're on a hot hot seat, maybe not quite a hot seat, but whatever. And so we can start. I think with the most obvious. I don't know who the most obvious. Who do you think the most obvious is? Then I'll I'll leave it to you. I have a I have a small list here, but go ahead. Who would you take number well, one in the must have it? Okay. Draft. Um, not necessarily. Yes, my job depends on it. But in terms of legacy meets opportunity, I'm taking Matt Painter of Purdue because they he has never been to a Final Four. He's one of two coaches in history to lose as a number one seed. To Fairleigh Dickinson. He's also lost to St. Peter's, who was a 15 seed. He's lost to North Texas. He's lost to Little Rock in the first round. He's had some ugly, ugly losses with very good teams. He's a great coach. Year in and year out, they're excellent. And this year, they're one of the four number one seeds. Zach Eady, one of the great players in school history, National Player of the Year, two years in a row. If you don't get to the Final Four this time, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, if you at least get to the regional final and lose, die with your boots on, you know, play a great game, lose to somebody like they did to Virginia in 2019, that's one thing. But you cannot punk out and go down early again with this group. I would agree. And it's also a little bit of um, what are your chances of having uh, I think unanimous first-team All-American and Nash he's going to be the National Player of the Year, right, Edie? Yeah. Yeah, you know, two time last year and this year. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get to the rest of the list, but some of these schools, yeah, they, those guys come, they don't come along all that often at Purdue. Uh, so I think you're right about opportunity. This is the team; it's got to happen, and then the 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 nature of the losses. So I, I guess I will go with that. Uh, the one I was thinking of as my number one was John Calipari at Kentucky. He has a lifetime contract, so uh, I don't think he can get fired, and we don't want the alternative there. Um, <laughs> just basketball. It's a good, good, good man. We don't need to do anything rash, rash there. But uh, life would be unpleasant, even more unpleasant with the uh, Big Blue Nation if uh, this doesn't work out. And um, they, you know, again, they have a ton of, uh, ton of talent. But I've watched a bunch of Kentucky. They There's times they just don't mesh. There's times they do. Guys pop up, but then at other times they don't. Um, I, he's still working on lineups and all of that. Um, has not been to a Final Four, though, since 2015 when they were 38-0 and lost to Wisconsin in a, a brutal loss. Yes. Brutal With an loss. absolutely overwhelmingly talented team. Incredibly talented team, exciting team, and they had a real, real shot at closing it out at 40 and 0 and would have been the pinnacle of uh, Cal's career. Uh, instead, they they lose that game round of 32, an Elite Eight, a Sweet 16, an Elite Eight, 
2020, they had a nice team. It really did. Then gets canceled. A nice team a lot of years. 2021, they go 9-16. and 16. Losing record. They come back, losing the first round of 64, round of 32, and now here we are. So it has been a long time. Uh, two Elite Eights, I guess, in, uh, what was that, nine years? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine years. Not enough at Kentucky. You're there, Pat. No. What is the pre- – I mean, is yeah. it just – yeah, and not yeah, not with just the level of players he's had. I mean, this should not be going that long without a Final Four. And lately, you know, yes, I, the the level of fatigue slash antagonism now towards Calipari is you know steadily grown. And this year's team, it's wild. I mean, they are fun. I mean, they fly up and down the court. They shoot fantastically. They're the best shooting team, three point range in the country. They've got dazzling talents, Reed Shepard, Rob Dillingham, um, you know, Antonio Reeves, another great shooter. They got three seven footers. They don't guard anybody. They take bad losses. They lost to North Carolina Wilmington. Uh, they lost in the first game of the SEC tournament again. Cal's postseason record the last three years, SEC and NCAA tournament is two and six at Kentucky. So uh, I agree with you that they need something this year, and I think they've got a path where they could they could make some noise. But you never know. Got it? I mean, Oakland. I that sets up as a very user friendly game for Kentucky because Oakland wants to run up and down the floor too. They're not going to stress Kentucky by making them play a different style. Then maybe Texas Tech, who's good but not great, and then you could have a Sweet Sixteen game against um, Marquette. That would really be a good game. So we'll see if that happens, but. Uh, there's a lot of cow fatigue in Kentucky. He could use uh, he could use a Final Four for sure. Yeah. Um, if you're wondering where Ross is, he's on the phone because that's a, yeah. you know we take this podcast very <laughs> seriously. <laughs> I don't know. He's talking to like you know his mom, or he's like talking to source. I don't know what he's doing. Uh, he said it would be just a just a minute or two, and it's been like five. Yeah. So. Yeah, part time is uh is doing his own thing right now. <laughs> For all we know, he's down the corner bar there in DC drinking. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he walked off, closed the door to the room, left the room, so we don't know where he is. He's kicking back some drinks with his buddy Ted Cruz, and uh, you know, I'd rather probably drink with Ted Cruz right now than do this too. But um, anyway, uh, yeah. So what happens? Let what happens if this does not go well? For Cal? I don't know. I mean, they, you know, it feels stuck like Jimbo Fisher was stuck. And eventually people at Texas A&M got tired of it and said, we'll just pay the ridiculous cost and you'll get going. But oil money's, look, there's a lot of money in Kentucky. There's a lot of horse money and coal money, but there isn't oil money per se. And I mean, we're talking 30 plus million dollars to buy out a basketball coach. Uh for schools that are constantly saying they don't have enough money. So I I think, you know, he's 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 not going without a buyout. He's not gonna sit there and say, you know what? No, I don't I don't want to coach. So no. he's he said, I think his quote is, I I'll, I'll leave when I say I'm ready to leave. And so, okay. But I so I don't know. I mean, one thing I could look at. Like, I don't think this team is going to make a Final Four. But they they have the capability to shoot their way there, but they cannot guard their way there. But Reed Shepard could be like the all-time NIL baby. He's a right. Kentucky kid. They love him. He's a great player. He could be a lottery pick, but I would not be shocked if they wheel up the Brinks truck for him. And as a guy who played for his mom and dad, played at Kentucky, I would not be shocked if he says, I'm coming back. We'll see. All right, who's your third pick? Third pick, I'm pick. going, yeah, Rick Barnes, uh, yeah. Tennessee. He's had an unbelievable career. He might be the winningest active coach. I, I'm not sure. But he's uh, he's had a phenomenal career, but he went to his last Final Four, his only Final Four in 2003 at Texas. Yeah. Kevin Durant, second-round loss. Tristan Thompson, early wipeout. So on and so forth. Pro player after pro player. Couldn't get it done. Goes to Tennessee. Revived that program. Has done phenomenally well there. Can't get there. Had a Sweet 16 loss with a really good team in 2018. Uh, last year, Sweet 16 lost to FAU. Lost to Loyola. 
this year they got a great team. I mean, great team. Yeah, they were the SEC regular season champions. They couldn't score. They went out and got Dalton Connect, who's going to be a lottery pick from Northern Colorado of all places. Got fixed the offense because he can shoot like crazy and score off the dribble. Uh, but that, but then all of a sudden they turn around and get housed in the SEC tournament. Now the old doubts are back again. And they, that floor, Tennessee has never been to the Final Four. Uh, it's yeah, lined up for them. It, it is. I think this is a really nice team. And um, I know they they lost Kentucky end of the season. And then the SEC thing, I don't care about that. Conference tournament, you're better off, I swear, losing in the first round than than winning it. Uh, it, it there's just no, there's no, um, oh, maybe there is some statistical data that shows something. But uh, I know there is if you try to win the title and stuff. But I don't really care about that. I love this team. Rick Barnes is a really good guy. Um, they got really good, you know, fans up there, and they're just desperate for that one Final Four. It's it's amazing it hasn't happened, uh, yeah. you know, at at Tennessee. So, um, I like this team, and I like the way they play, and I certainly think, uh, you know, what the funny part is, this could match up a Purdue Tennessee Elite Eight where someone's yeah. leaving. T- uh, disappointed, but I think yeah. with Rick Barnes, it would be nice to make that Final Four because because of his history uh, since since TJ Ford took him there, um, and te- and Tennessee's. But he's done an excellent job, better job than um. I tell you, most coaches that switch go major second, go to their second major program, like the Texas to Tennessee kind of switch. It doesn't work this well. It is a real testament to Rick Barnes that they're they're doing this well. That he's got yeah. the the program going this well. All right, my second round pick is uh, John Shire at Duke, and again, yep. n- none of these guys are really on a hot seat, but it's just uncomfortable seat. Um, and it's just it's two years in, and you kind of want to kind of want to see something. They got a lot of good talent at at Duke, and look, he's thirty six years old. Um, I think I said in the last one, he's not. Coach K, neither was Coach K after two years. I think they wanted to fire him. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, they, they were getting ready to fire him. Tom Izzo, they were ready to get fired after two years. A lot of guys. Uh, 27 wins last year, losing the, in the second round. 24 this year. Good, but not, you know, not an overwhelming season. And I'm not necessarily saying it would be uncomfortable as much as it'd be like just really big for him. To have a big run, it would be it would mean a lot. I mean, they've got um, you know they got huge recruits coming in. Uh, Cooper Flag, right? He's coming. Yep. Yep. Um, Number one player so next year. They're they're going to be fine. Um, but I will say, like for a month there, you know they won. What did they win? They closed out six. Uh, oh, what did they win? They won a. Didn't they have a good? No, they did not. Have, that was the year before. Sorry. Um, right, they got they had a, a good big stretch. role at the end last year. But yeah, yeah, no, they, they, had good, they've had, they had a good stretch had in the good middle stretches. of February. Lost yeah. a wake in that game. I don't know. Um, again, ACC tournament wasn't great for him. Don't care. It's got a lot of talent on this team. I think it would mean not so much a bad if you lose early, but really good if you could make a run deep in that second weekend. Yep, I'm with you. Um, you know, I, I mean, everybody there really likes Shire, and his recruiting is absolute gangbusters. So nobody's sitting there saying, "Oh my God," you know, the t- the clock's ticking on him. But it's Duke, you know, and you're handed the keys to maybe the ultimate Cadillac in the sport. So the expectation is you drive it to the finish line. You get to the Final Four. Um, this team, it yeah, there's just it just t- hadn't really quite come together. I don't think you know they've they've got good players, they got good pieces. They don't have a dominant player. They don't have an overwhelming stylistic advantage. Um, you know they could get hot, I think, because again they have talent. They got first round talent in a couple couple spots, but and I think I wouldn't be shocked if in the second round they're playing James Madison, uh, which you know could be a nice advantage there. The 12 seed. JMU, I think, could knock off Wisconsin. But, you know, after that, then you got Houston sitting there, maybe. So it, it's going to be a hard road, but uh, I'm, I'm fascinated to see how Duke does. So Thursday at noon, would you rather be watching at a bar or would you rather be watching at a at like a little house party type thing? Get some friends together. Um, 
it's a I question think, for I, the ages, you know. It's really it is. What, no, it's absolutely a question for the ages. I, I, as I get older and crabbier, I might think house party, but I love the bar setting where everybody starts rooting for the underdog, you know. Um, I, I'll never forget one of the funnest days I've had was the first round in 96 in a bar in Milwaukee. And I think it might have been St. Patrick's Day. And everybody is getting blitzed. And all of a sudden, Princeton is beating UCLA, defending champion mm -hmm. UCLA. And they run that backdoor play for the winning basket. And the whole bar is suddenly erupting like with more Ivy League joy than they have ever even considered. I love <laughs> that sort of thing. Ross, would you rather be drunk at the bar or drunk at your friend's house for Thursday at noon? I well, Sober, I'm not with... an option. <laughs> well, never. Of course, never. Uh, I am I'm kind of like Pat here. Yeah, I, I, when you, the reaction of the bar and the feeling being in the bar to the, you know, the 14 seed or the 12 seed or something on the way to pulling the upset, upset is awesome. Uh, I was at a bar for the St. Peter's run last mm -hmm. year uh, a couple of their wins and it, it there's there's uh, almost nothing better and, and more exciting so um i will go uh yeah i'll go with a bar route even though it's the more expensive route in the route in which you don't get to pay attention completely to the game which that can be an issue uh but uh but it's fun so i yeah i'd go that route yeah that's i was in birmingham at a bar with fairly dickinson last year and people were just going crazy crazy it was so fun then you got to stay and party like you went to fairly dickinson right <laughs> i've been to teaneck i've been to that campus i like the people that are like you know they're upset when the 16 beats the one because oh, that's my my brackets busted dude it's gonna get busted <laughs> yeah. like live yeah. a little live a little yeah we love everyone over at our tourney games at yahoo sports but live a little enjoy the moment be present be present. Uh, 24 seconds, Bar and Grill, 12 Mile Road in Berkeley, Michigan. I know that'll be showing all the games if you're in, in the will metropolitan you be there? area. Um, I'm not sure. I don't believe so. Okay. Okay. I don't believe so. But house party? Could be. No, I don't know where I, I may I may have to travel. I I got I my whereabouts, I cannot divulge. <laughs> Dan's cafe, Dan's bar in the backyard. Yeah, I do have huh? a cafe in my backyard. Uh, Cloak and dagger, Dan. Can't no, I can't. It, I, I'm not. I'm not telling you, Pat. Let's just say that. So, how about basis. this? I'll be in Detroit the second weekend of the tournament. Let's get together. Mm. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> Pat, who's your final four? My final four uh, is. Two number one seeds and two number threes. I've got UConn, because of course I have UConn. Um, I have Houston. I'm hoping they can get over losing by 28 points in the Big 12 final. That was alarming. Um, I've got Creighton, and I've got Baylor. So I got two Big East and two Big 12. Um, some offense, some defense. Let the best man win, and the best man's going to be Danny Hurley again. UConn's going to win. Uh, Ross, do you make any picks? Me? I'm up. I made picks. I did. I think uh, Yahoo kind of uh, encouraged to. us, Danny, yeah. to, yeah, to, to strongly encourage to make picks. So uh, that was fun going through and, and picking games because uh, I don't catch a ton of the shooty hoops apps action. But uh, and Pat's probably going to laugh uh, a few times when I give my final four. But here we go. Uh, I have uh, I have UConn getting upset, actually, in the Sweet 16 by Bruce Pearl and the Auburn Tigers. I got Auburn in the Final Four, um, along with Arizona uh, coming out of the bottom of that bracket. Uh, on the other side, Houston. I do have Houston. And then I have the drums, Dan. Oh, the drum man. is yeah. making it all the way to the final four, the boilers. Uh, there so go. there you go. Houston, Purdue, Arizona, and Auburn. If Purdue wins the national championship, I will then allow that they have a West Lafayette. <laughs> <laughs> I will now it would, allow. It would that literally put them on the map. It would put them on the map. 
Otherwise, you're just Lafayette with a very small creek running through it. Very small creek. I'd been on a there's a guy the guy on Twitter keeps saying I'm doing better. I was like really improving yeah. now. Here I am. Yeah. You guys yeah. taught no. me with the pretty stuff. It's You're not backsliding. A big backsliding. I have no idea who I picked on the pick'em contest. Um our bracket challenge though, bracket madness going twenty five K over Yahoo Sports. Go play it. It's a good game. I've always had great games on that. I I do not recall who I picked on that, so this may not. Uh, I'm absolutely picking UConn. Um, Houston scares the bejesus out of me because I feel like they got a 23% shooting night in them. Right. But um, I don't care. I like how they play, so I'm picking them also. I had no idea. Like you said, we talked about Purdue versus Tennessee. <laughs> It's like a <laughs> stare down at the end. <laughs> oh, man. I, I If it comes really to that, like I already feel bad for the loser. You like yes. Creighton in that, huh? I, I Yeah. I mean, they can score. They got got a seven-footer that they can stack up against uh, Edie. Yeah. Now have a Tennessee losing to Texas. Mm. Could happen. Oh, boy, yeah. We got that, that pot touch of Rick Barnes. Anything can happen yeah. in here. I'm telling you, like, seeds two through four. Two through twelve, no difference. Yes, yes, I know. The margin I between know. two and twelve is so small. I think there's a great chance we get another FAU or San Diego State. You know, I mean, James Madison wouldn't shock me if they end up in the I, Final Four. Um, I, well, yeah, I don't know who I got as Cinderella. I don't you know, know who to uh, take in that division. I, I don't know. Uh, we'll scrap that one. Uh, out west, these are good picks, aren't they? Scrap like, that one. Yeah, wonderful pick. I think Probably. I picked Baylor. You cannot Baylor. abdicate, you cannot abdicate the pick. <laughs> Good Lord. Oh, all right. Uh, well, it's not going to be <laughs> Kansas. <laughs> oh, yeah. I have James Madison in the Sweet 16. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that's my Cinderella, I guess. I, got, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I know. It was, I... <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> <laughs> this is going great. Hey, wait. Let's pick the CFP Final Four for next season. <laughs> We'll probably have a better chance of doing that, me and Dan. Well, because well, because there's probably going to be the same damn teams as usual. Yeah, yeah it's true. easier to pick those ones coming up. Um, no, uh, the I guess I'll take uh, take I guess I'll take Tennessee. I don't want to I, I don't want to be mean to either Tennessee or Purdue. I feel bad. All right, I'll take Creighton. I'll be like Pat. Skip it. Go. I don't know. I have no idea these things. Um, I was listening to uh, in Detroit. Uh, 97 one and Doug Karsh and Gator Anderson were on the radio and they were talking about uh, the, uh, the 30 and three record of McNeese state. And they brought up their non-conference schedule, which I did not realize was so bad. Oh, it's incredible. Have you heard this thing? Oh, so they oh, yeah. beat oh, Virginia yeah. Commonwealth is their only top 100 win. But then after that, this was what they, st- <laughs> this is what they started with college of biblical studies. Uh huh. <laughs> Remember, we had a little biblical studies bit on their women's team. Yeah, that only scored uh, yeah. eight points, right? Yeah, and they only, right. yeah, yeah. Yep. biblical studies. They're they're studying their Bible. They're not playing a lot of ball. Then they played champion Christian. I don't know what they've got against the Christians, but for, McNeese State is just curb stomping them. Then they played something called Laternia. Laterno. Yep. What is that? It's some D2 <laughs> school out in the field. <laughs> okay. You know? A lot of people people like will play them in an exhibition game. Wait, what did Pat say? A school out in the field? Yeah, it's out there somewhere. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what it, I don't know. I've never heard of it. I'm sure it's a good school. Good job. Uh, um, then <laughs> this one just threw everybody. Mississippi University for women. They played yeah. the <laughs> Oh, MUW. MUW. <laughs> Now has a men's basketball team. It it does. It, yeah, it, uh, they changed the name because, uh, you know, well because they started accepting <laughs> men years ago, what? and then they recently changed the name again. Have y'all heard about this? This has been a whole controversy, you know. And Mississippi State boy here, in, uh, Mississippi University for Women is just down the street, right from Mississippi State, and um, there's been this whole controversy because. When they start allowing men in, when they started allowing men in, they, they started to mess with the name a little bit, trying to change it. And this recently happened over the last few months. They changed it. And I can't remember what they changed it to, but it got such backlash and was so terrible. They had to change it again recently. It's been quite a mess. Really? Well, you know why 
McNeese scheduled those games, don't you, yeah. Dan? Yeah, because he was out. He was suspended. Yeah, well, Wade was suspended for the first 10 games. So they put as many cadavers as in there as possible. Ah, yes. they oh, did they okay. change it to the W? Yeah, well, that that was years ago. So okay. they had to change the W. Everybody referred it to, to it as a W. And then they wanted to change it again. So they changed it to Winbridge State University. Really? Winbridge State University. Yeah. Uh, people were making fun that it, it sounds like some uh, hotel chain of some sort. <laughs> Winbridge State. <laughs> okay. Um, so, well, they know. only scored 29 in that game. That's so. Yeah. I think McNeese is good. I'm I'm uh, I'm excited for Will Wade uh, back in, but the the schedule, yeah, there's strength the schedule, and then there's that. <laughs> I'm gonna be like Larry David. Why? Why do I have to have picks? <laughs> Your picks are never any good. No one's while. picks are any good. Why do I have to have picks? Uh, so uh, people will way, feel Coach, better about Co- their own picks. Oh well, this <laughs> guy. Says he doesn't know anything <laughs> and clearly knows nothing. He's a total idiot on this podcast I listen to. I wouldn't yeah, listen to him. I would not take yeah, his advice perfect. on anything. And uh, By the way, uh power slap, maybe. But uh, hey, Coach Dell, uh, my dad, uh, texted me and wondered if Pat had enough time to play in his pool, his bracket <laughs> he, pool. He texted me an entry No, he didn't. It. Oh, no. Yes, he did. Oh, yes. Oh, I yeah. Told him yeah. Not to do that. <laughs> I'll get to it. I'll. I hope. I will Please. try. I will try. Don't, don't kill yourself. <laughs> All right. Well, let's close out. I was, with... I was charmed. I was flattered. Get in there, Pat. I not me. Yeah. I don't have a pick. I'm picking a final three. Oh. A final three. <laughs> Jack Daniels, Jim Beam, and <laughs> Jameson. Why do I have to have a pick? It's like people walking around in December. You get your Christmas shopping done yet? No, it's not Christmas. I don't have to get it done on December 7th. Not December 20th. Don't, I don't have any picks. Uh, <laughs> Curmudgeon Dan, here he is. I don't know. I, I What am I supposed to say? I don't know. I don't Creighton, have any picks. I, I don't have any picks. Creighton, they're going to get it done. Go Creighton. People's Court, uh, 80-year-old man um, pleaded guilty Tuesday to two felony wildlife crimes. Mm. Um, It was connected to his years-long effort to create a giant hybrid sheep (laughs) using cloning and illegal insemination. Oh, come on now. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. illegal or artificial or both. They're like, I don't want to know. Never. Federal prosecutors are deeming it illegal. Um, Arthur Jack Schubarth was creating a hybrid sheet as a, t- a sheep as a target for hunters at private facilities. He oh, violated both international and federal law. This was an audacious scheme. <laughs> That's a government said. So this dude, Schubarth, owns 215 acre alternative livestock ranch in montana i had no idea this world you think i got time to make picks when i'm learning about alternative livestock oh, ranches yeah, no. too busy starting in 23 they were working to create a large hybrid species of sheep to sell to game ranches he bought parts of a of the marco polo argali sheep i don't what does that mean parts <laughs> which can weigh 300 pounds and they had to sneak it in from, I'm, I, I, I'm going to say the country wrong, Kazakhstan, without declaring the importation. They will stop that. I mean, I once tried to bring like some, like some meat from Germany, and they wouldn't let me bring like a. You why? Know. Why did? Why did you? We're you trying this to make like sausage, a sausage or something. Yeah, like a okay, sausage. Right. Okay, okay. My father. Oh, you said mead. Like not me. <laughs> How the hell did you get this 300 pound sheep in? Anyway, um, so he's trying to put these two sheep together and uh, create this monster that then the hunters can shoot and kill. Because it's big and slow? I mean, what? what? Montana Mountain. Uh, they. They use the Montana Mountain King to artificially impregnate various other sheep and create hybrid animals. I don't like this person. Mm-mm. 
I can go on. This is scary. No. Don't do yeah. this. Yeah. No, I don't like this person. No need. <laughs> yeah. People's court. Uh, life in Bad prison. Guy. Yeah. This guy's 80. What are you doing, bro? Yeah. <laughs> right. Send him to live on a sheep farm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he lives on the sheep farm, but like oh. hunters, like go ahead and hunt. There's plenty of things to hunt. Go down to Texas and shoot those wild boar. Dress him like a the, sheep and make him roam around the uh, hunting <laughs> country land. See if he can get go. away from some of those hunters. We do not yeah. need this stuff. What's your yeah. what's your uh, just guilty and uh, death penalty? Or maybe he's yeah, got to get I, I, artificially guilty. impregnated by the sheep. <laughs> there you oh, go. God, damn. Yes. <laughs> you know what happens? Off if the rails. I, I, you know what happens if one of these things get loose? Guardrails. The pod, the, the 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 this this uh, the pod just went off the uh, off the rails. You know you know that meme of the train going across the train bridge and mm. over the canyon. You know and it <laughs> yeah. goes off the bridge and it just crashes. There's this fiery crash. Yeah, the, that's the pod. <laughs> MPM on Tuesday night. We'll be back when there's only 16 teams left in this tournament. Then I'll make my final four picks. Oh, ah, there oh, we go. Oh, Cheat wow, a little bit. Oh, I don't know. I made some picks. Um. Hope everybody enjoys the next four days uh, or five days, whatever, whenever you listen to this. It is a great time of year. Get out to the bar. Get to your watch party. Make inappropriate bets. Do not uh, work. 1-800-GAMBLING. Yes. A lot of flu. A lot of afternoon flu. Yep. Uh, make the most of it. It's a good time. Uh, a at any moment, they try may try to destroy the entire uh, tournament. So we may have only yeah. a couple left. That's right. Might as well enjoy Embrace them now. You got it. One day you'll tell your kids this thing used to be awesome. <laughs> then uh, we needed basic cable homes somewhere. <laughs> so it's no longer any good. <laughs> yeah. But dad, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. Well, that's what happened. So there was this alliance thing. <laughs> mm. Son, let me tell you about the alliance. A waste of a year and a half. <laughs> uh, we will talk to you later. <laughs>